probably the last thing I should be talking to you about on this channel is Mario. There's no shortage of people who will tell you about this iconic franchise, how it defined their childhood, an entire genre, or the direction of home console gaming as a whole. When it comes to my personal feelings, I think 2D Mario's fine. I don't got time for him. We're too busy talking about Japanese-only arcade fashion rhythm card games like a token all on this channel. I don't need to tell you that Jumpman's jump feels good. <laughs> Despite that, I want to talk to you about Super Mario Land, but maybe not for the reasons you'd suspect. I believe it's common knowledge that this title is a little weird. They're shooter segments. Mario's fire flower shots are instead Arkanoid style balls that bounce around the screen, as well as just there being some very non-Mario style presentational elements here. Everything looks and sounds off. However, I'm more interested in the parts that are directly related to the core franchise. When I think of things people praise 2D Mario games for, it's usually for their tight controls, their expansive number of levels with clever yet challenging designs. This title lacks both of these things. In Super Mario Land, Jumpman's Jump doesn't feel so good. <laughs> Kind of. It's slippery, but I was able to get used to the controls. There's also only four generically themed worlds. What I find particularly fascinating, though, is the level design, because none of them stand out. There's occasional gimmicks, yet the core platforming uses the same types of challenges throughout. With the exception of the background flare, each area doesn't have mechanical personality in its platform spacing, obstacles, structures, or design. This is only magnified by how Super Mario Land handled its difficulty curve. 1-1 is an easy and straightforward level. As soon as you hit World 1-2, the difficulty ramps up significantly. Before it goes any further than this though, it actually steadies out. Yes, the final platforming level is the most challenging, but not much harder than anything after World 1-2. Super Mario Land feels weirdly consistent in both its challenge and design. From a modern perspective, I think that can make it come off as watered down. However, I feel like this approach was probably intentional. You may be aware that this is a Game Boy launch title. It's one of the first instances of taking a console experience that conveyed a real sense of adventure, then trying to pack that down to fit on a severely limited portable platform. When you look at other launch games, Tetris, Alleyway, as well as various sports titles, you can tell they were meant to be bite-sized experiences. Sure, you could play them for an hour, however they also need to provide instant gratification to fit into the small windows of free time in our lives. They aim to be just as satisfying in 5 minutes as it is in 30. Despite Super Mario Land being different structurally from other launch titles, it still tries to fit this bill. It shows its hand up front to make sure you feel like you've gotten the full Mario experience, even if you don't come close to finishing all four worlds. Everything that comes after World 1 feels like fluff in case you have extra time since it doesn't have the infinite playability of, say, Tetris. Which results in a game that feels incredibly distilled and raw, a feeling that's only enhanced by its simple yet charming calculator-esque graphics. Look at Mario, look at this Goomba, look at this Koopa, they're so cute but don't stand too close to it or else. <laughs> Game Boy titles would eventually more closely resemble full-fledged console experiences. Just look at Super Mario Land 2, which is an expansive adventure you'll likely need multiple play sessions to complete. In some ways, the original Super Mario Land is almost the perfect Mario to come back to if you ever want a quick nostalgic hit. Even if you turn it off after a few levels, it doesn't feel like you've only had a partial experience. If Super Mario Bros. Game & Watch wasn't specifically tied to the 35th anniversary of said game, Super Mario Land would probably serve the device better. Maybe? Who am I kidding? It's a collector's item. It will sit on shelves and never be touched either way. I don't think I'd say Super Mario Land is my favorite 2D Mario. It's a fascinating distillation of the franchise for sure, but with some weird bonuses tacked on. That being said, true to its content, it also feels very skippable. Honestly, it kind of kept me company on a weird night where I was feeling a little lost and wasn't sure what to do. That raw Mario experience that doesn't particularly care if you stick around or not was kind of just what I needed. Thanks for watching! One Controller Port has a focus on games with a notable place in history, as well as titles with a distinct take on a franchise or genre. 
If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and visit OneControllerPort.com for videos, podcasts, streams, and articles. You can also follow me on Twitter and Twitch via the links in the description. Thank you.